Work. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, um, Bo Ryan, uh, big decision for him today. He's about to announce his future on this very show. Please make him welcome our friend Bo Ryan. Yeah. Hey, Bowie. All right, Bo, we've, you've kept us all uh, waiting on tender hooks. Yep. How are you what, going, everyone? What's happening, champ? Um, look, yeah, sorry I'm late, first of all. My mum always said to have nice manners. Um, but I've been out at Cronulla. Um, I spoke to the club last night and, and Gal and a few of the boys and we called a dinner. And um, after speaking with my family and the club doctor and um, the boys at Cronulla and in particular my loved ones, I've... Um, made the decision to um, end my career effective immediately from the NRL. So you've retired as of now? Yeah, as of, um, as of right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a hard decision, but uh, I owe a lot of people a lot of things. Um, obviously, with my injury, I'm a guy who bases my game and, uh, on, on hard work and I'm proud of being a, a guy that's had to get through, not on ability, but on uh, dedication and and to not be able to put my body on the line for the team and not be able to put my body in, on the line and make a collision for these um, guys that I love, um, I'm not doing them justice. Um, I spoke to my, my beautiful wife, Cara, my wife, Re oh, I didn't speak to Remy, she sort of just laughed at me and pointed at me. Um, <laughs> but after looking at them and, and waking up next to them each day, um, you know, if something would have happened to me, um, I'd never forgive myself and... My family comes first. I well, that's them. what you had to think about, wasn't it? I mean, you could you could have played another three or four or five mate, years. But, it's you funny. Know, you, it's health, mate. You know, when you're a kid, you, you want to play. Even the start of this year, I wanted to play forever. But um, being realistic and seeing what happens in the NRL and, and the guys will tell you it's a tough game and the guys are getting bigger and stronger. And, um, you know, I just want to thank a lot of people. Um, you know, I've, I've been very lucky and I've, I've been blessed from above. And a lot of people have helped me along the way. Um, my mum and dad, obviously drove me to training and you know, I wouldn't be here without my mum and I owe them everything. They're very supportive and, and they're the ones that got me into rugby league. My wife and, and daughter, like I said, are my inspiration and they're supportive whether I wanted to play football or be a tree lopper, they'd be by my side. Um, my manager, Wayne Beavis, every time I get to the crossroads, I ring him and he, he points me in the right direction. I think in life everyone needs someone who inspires them and uh, gives them direction and he's, he's my angel and he's the one that leads me. Um, you guys are Channel 9. David Gingell, I had a long lunch with him yesterday and um, I consider Channel 9 as a family. Um, I admire what you do. Uh, I know you've been here 20 years, but that's, that's half the time I want to be here. Um, I'm not saying I want to be in your chair. I like mm, this chair. Yeah. <laughs> um, here, they, yeah. here they come. But I, <laughs> <laughs> Many have tried. I, I, I genuinely love what I do. Um, I love being here. We're all shapes and sizes, as, as the big man up here. <laughs> you and, might end up like this, yeah, bro. And, and it's and, it, and I'm in a position now where I, I get to go out and I, I get to make people laugh and make people yeah. smile. And I want to do it for the rest of my life. I want to thank uh, the Cronulla Sharks who give me the opportunity to do it week in, week out um, and promote the club and, and we leverage off each other. And um, I can, I'm going to continue to work with the club for the rest of the year. And, even though I'm not meant to be speaking to Flano, he still thinks I'm playing next year, but I don't care what the NRL say because I'm not a player anymore. Um, <laughs> I'm going to continue to work with Cronulla, hopefully for the next 10 years. I want to thank, I want to thank the West Tigers as well. Yeah. Um, so the West Tigers, Tim Sheens gave me an opportunity back in 2007 to play NRL um, and in 2009 to come on the show. Um, and I left the club, I think, on good terms and... I've got a lot of respect for the people there. I'd like to thank them. And I'd also like to thank uh, all the fans out there, not just the fans of the Sharks and the Tigers, but the fans, you guys, of rugby league. People that come up to me in the street, people that come up to me in restaurant, in the cafe, people who come up to me and stick their head in my car when I'm driving in traffic and scare the shit out of my wife. Um, those people are the guys. Um, you know, it makes me feel good to make these people happy and laugh and, and, and put a smile on their face because they're the, the average punter and... They're the guy I like to um, inspire at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, like I said, I wasn't a guy with the, with the most ability. I wasn't the biggest guy. I wasn't the fastest guy. I wasn't the strongest guy. But I was dedicated. And it just shows if you're... It uh, doesn't matter if you're a, you know, a young boy or a young girl. If you're dedicated and you work hard, then you can achieve anything you want.
rugby league or cricket, um, you have long careers and eventually you've got to retire. Sometimes it's not on your own terms. And um, Slats, I mean, you played a long time at cricket. and we, We've all got to retire. You've done it on your own terms, obviously because of an injury. But you, look, you had a great career. 126 first grade games, 53 tries, mind you, in that time. So that's one every two games. That's very, very good. And you, did you know, in NRL, there's only 7% of players who actually play first grade NRL get to play more than 100 games. Mm. So, you know, you're in, you're in the elite, mate, 126 games. You, you, fantastic career. And uh, congratulations yeah. to you. And you know what? Yeah. Apart from that, apart from that, you've brought a lot of joy. You've brought a lot of joy to, to, to the fans who have followed you and your clubs. Yeah. And you've put bummers on seats at both the West Tigers and the Cronulla Sharks. So, you know, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Go on, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny that the thing about rugby league, I'm, um, you know, I got told at a young age, 18, 9, I'd never play first grade. And to play 126 games, no one can take that from me. Yeah. Um, I've played with some great players, Paul Gallen, Benji Marshall, Robbie Farrar. And I've played against guys like Billy Slater and Sam Thiday. And when I was a kid, I used to pretend to be Terry Lamb. And now yeah. I see kids in my street pretending to be Billy Slater. And some of the bit slower ones pretend to be Bo Ryan, but I, I, still, I still think that's a good yeah. thing. But um, no one can take that away from me. And... I just, I just can't uh, express enough how if you work hard and if you want a goal and if you surround yourself with positive people and people who influence you in the right, in the right way and who, who are supportive and who are going to push you in the right direction, then you can achieve uh, anything you want and the sky's the limit for me yeah. at the moment. Yeah, just, Bowie, could, sorry, mate, I just yeah. want to ask you about the neck and you said you, you feared the collision and how is it now, mate, and, and, and how long will it um, take? Yeah, look, I, I'm going to get another opinion in, uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. I've got to go see a surgeon, but... Um, I was at the stage where I probably would have needed to sit the rest of the year out or, or, or require surgery again. Here's the collision with George Fafua last year. And um, I didn't want to firstly do that to my teammates. Um, you know, we're in a position now, Cronulla, where we're, we're obviously struggling and financially. And I spoke to Flano and guys like that who, who want to recruit players to the club. So this way they can do that. Um, another way is obviously I, by speaking to the surgeon and, and, and the doctor, he said... Um, you know, missing this much time, and you know, when you're injured, Billy, and that will, will, will they know um, you sort of you feel outside the group. And, and rugby league can give you so many ups, but at the same time, I'll waffle to you, give you so many downs. And being a rugby league player isn't about, about being physical and tough; it's about being, uh, you know, mentally drained at times, and you get to some dark places. And I just, uh, I just, you know, if I would have persisted doing what what I was doing, I, I wouldn't have been in a good place. And I thought, you know, life's about timing and. It's been pretty good to me now, and I just thought this was the time. Well, to play again, you would have needed another operation. Well, right? I would have had to sit the rest of the year yeah. out and, and risk it again and, and, and then required operation again, and I wouldn't have done that to my family, no way. All right. Well, speaking of your family, Cara's in the crowd, and Aaron's over there with us. I am here with Bo's beautiful wife, Cara, and we're speaking out the back, and you were saying that watching Bo play, something you used to absolutely love doing, is more of a chore for you these days. It's actually difficult for you to watch him run out there. Yeah, you know, just to see all those highlights then was just absolutely amazing. You forget about all the years of, you know, those amazing times when he was playing at his potential and his body was, you know, the fittest that, you know, it's ever been. And, you know, to see how he has been struggling the last few games, um, it was really hard to watch. Is it almost a sense of relief for you now, do you think? It, it is now, you know. I've, I've never really been too opinionated in the decisions that Bo's made in his career with, you know, decisions to go to teams or to, um, you know, or to stay or go. And I always wanted him to make the decisions on his own accord. But this time I just said, you know, I, don't, I know I don't say much, you know, often, but... I find it really hard to watch, um, always worrying about, you know, whether the injury is going to get a lot worse. And, you know, we've got a family, you know, of our own now. It's not, you know, just our, our parents and, and, you know, our family surrounding us. It's also the future of our daughter. So, yeah, it's a bit... It's a bit um, and you, yeah. you, I mean, Bo said up there that he wasn't the fastest or the strongest or, you know, the player with the most ability, but he was a, 
a bloody good player and you must yeah. be so proud of what you've achieved. Oh, I know. I, I think you just... It's amazing how quickly you can forget the achievements that you make in life. Like, and like I said, just to look at all those highlights, it's... it's um, yeah, you can quickly kind of forget how hard and how well he did do. And people love him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's good. He, you know, he's great to be around and, you know, I'll be happy to have him around a bit more often and, and so will Remy. So, yeah, it's, 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 you know, as sad as what it is, there's some exciting things coming. So, Well, thank you so much for being yeah. with us tonight. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. And the good news, of course, for Channel 9 viewers is that uh, Bo has signed on with Nine full-time. He's He's hosting the day, doing the morning yeah. show as well. A <laughs> uh, couple of cooking shows. 60, 60 minutes. minutes. <laughs> reading the news. See Peter Overton, see you later. Uh, he'll be reading the news and probably yeah, doing everything on this show. But ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of his career, but the start of a brand new life. As we go to the break, I think we all stand up yeah. and give him a round of applause. <laughs>